talking yes. about? Okay, well, welcome everyone to the press conference uh, for Girls Government for this year. And I'm delighted to host it. And this is interesting because it's the fourth year of Girls Government. Started in Parkdale High Park, has now spread to Donna Cansfield's riding and also Elizabeth Whitmer's riding, Kitchener Waterloo and Etobicoke Centre. And we're hoping we'll spread right across the, the province. In fact, there's good news in that regard. Uh, last night we had a all-party all women MPP meeting and the first topic was girls government so I'm hoping that it really has some wind under its sails. I want to particularly thank Holy Family and also thank Public Park, uh, Parkdale Public as well for taking part this year from Parkdale High Park and I want to th thank my ex executive assistant this phenomenal young woman named Butila Carpache who has filled in for me when I can't be at the meetings and I want to thank you in the press for coming and of course the press studio. Uh, what the girls do is they come here for a day. They meet with, and this afternoon we'll be meeting with the Minister of Social Services, John Malloy. They'll also be meeting with the Minister of Education this afternoon for a brief period because of their topic. They also go to Ottawa and they meet there with a senator or a member of parliament who's a woman. Here uh, they also get to spend some time with the speaker and tour the place. But more importantly, they meet once a month in their schools and in their community dealing with the topic that they decide to deal with. And this year it's poverty. You'll hear the girls talking about that in a moment. So I'm delighted to introduce uh, our speaker number one, Helen Costa from Holy Family. Good afternoon, my name is Helen Costa and I am one of the lucky six participants that were chosen from Holy Family Catholic School to be part of the Girls in Government program. This is the fourth year Cherry De Novo has held this program, but the only difference is the schools selected this year which are Holy Family Catholic School and as well as Parkdale Public School. From these schools, the total amount of six out of 12 girls were chosen to participate in this program, with myself included. During our meetings, our group came up with two really important causes, but we had to decide on one, the one we think is a much bigger problem. We debated several times due to po political deadlock results. However, when the results had altered, poverty was the cause that had gotten the majority of votes. So that is the cause we are promoting. To enter upon of this consultation, I will state what Girls in Government is all about. For starters, this program is sponsored by Terry DeNovo, who is the MPP for Parkdale High Park. This is a program that motivates young girls like us to be captivated with the idea that government can be our future career path. Why is this important? Well, there is a disappointing amount of women in government, and it is not satisfying knowing that 51% 50, of the world's population are women, but yet Canada is ranked the position of 30 eighths of the 188 countries with women in national parliaments. Because of these poor results, our sponsor Cherry De Novo wants this program to spread across Ontario, anticipating girls to be aware and to take interest in politics. Before I became a part of Girls in Government, I didn't comprehend much about politics and the importance of it. Now, after the meetings we have had, my education towards politics has drastically increased. We may not want to be in government when we're older, but Cherry De Novo has opened our eyes and made us realize that it is a possible career. I believe girls in government has the quality of being essential to women's representation. This is one of the many things that made the program meaningful and intriguing to me. I am very grateful for this opportunity of being part of this significant program. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. And our next speaker is Dolkar from Parkdale Public. My name is Lopsing Dolkar and I'm a student at Parkdale Public School and a member of the group Girls Government run by Cherry DeNova and Butila. The issue that we've chosen to present to you is poverty. We think that this is an important issue because poverty is an issue that crosses all barriers from age to gender to culture. It affects people from all around the world and even in our own neighborhood. Where I live in Parkdale, there are about three different food banks, all of which serve hundreds yearly, as well as four homeless shelters. Poverty has become an even more important subject due to the recession. This has resulted in people losing jobs and not being able to find new ones. Even people with university degrees and diplomas are having trouble finding jobs. A person who has worked hard to get an education should be able to get a job and shouldn't have to live in poverty. We acknowledge the fact that the 
the fact that the government is providing resources for the people that are struggling, but we feel that more needs to be done. We need to make ends meet. We need more opportunities for these people so they can achieve the things they want to in life. Last but not least, we consider this matter of great importance. Not only for the struggling members of our community, but for the community of Toronto as a whole. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And our third speaker is Yeshi Lamo from Parkdale Public. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yeshi Lamo, and I'm a student from Parkdale PS. I am also a proud member of Girls' Government, held by none other than Chair DeNovo, our MPP of Parkdale High Park, and her amazing assistant, Butila. Our topic is poverty, and so far we have chosen and assigned each of our members a job. We want to advertise the topic of poverty, so we have planned to present two assemblies, one at Holy Family and one at Parkdale PS. We hope the assembly will explain the effects of poverty and how we can help. We plan to bring in representatives from our local food bank to tell and talk about how much people rely on them. We hope to see improvement in the treatment of people of poverty. Poverty is a big problem, so we can only do as much. But I hope our efforts will shed an extra light on the topic of poverty. Thank you. Well, thank you um, both, uh, all of you girls, and thank you to the teachers and to all the other girls who are here too from Parkdale Public and Holy Family, and for all the hard work that they did this session on, on girls' government. Uh, and uh, again, just to remind everyone, um, this is not a paid political announcement. I didn't tell them to use our names or who <laughs> teal us. Uh, this is a, a, a real nonpartisan effort, and we really want to see this spread across Ontario for all political parties in all ridings. This is not just the effort of the NDP. This is the effort of women in politics for women in politics. So with those words, I'll open it up to the press for questions. Uh, I'm just wondering, you watched Question Period today? What did you guys think of it? Um, I thought that the adults would act different because they're adults and they they kind of acted like children, like the way they didn't respect when other people were talking. It's fairly common. <laughs> what about you two? What did you think of it? Um, I agree with her. I was kind of shocked by their behavior. Um, yeah, it, it was like I res expected like people to respect each other but that was the complete opposite it was chaos in the room um, I would agree with them it was quite interesting in fact um, once I would say something and the other would reply but it wasn't exactly in their turn but it's definitely interesting <laughs> I'm also curious what was the other topic you chose poverty but uh, we gay had rights. Yeah, gay rights yeah. youth empowerment um, we also had bullying um, what was it? The tuition fees? Lower tuition fees? So you got quite a few good ideas. Mm -hmm. It must have been hard to choose one. Oh, yeah. What will you be asking uh, the Minister of Community and Social Services later on today about poverty? Um, Go ahead. We're, since uh, we've actually um, done s part of our, we've, we're almost there, and we hope maybe if he's got time, that maybe he could come in and give a few words. Did you have any recommendations for him that from your meetings that you're going to pass along? We would ask him to put more food banks if he could in lo in like neighborhoods like Parkdale because even though we have like three or four food banks in the in the area, we feel that there needs to be more done because I still see wandering people, homeless people, ask, begging for food practically. And it really makes me sad to see that this kind of thing happens even in Canada, which is supposedly a developed country. Um, I agree with the food banks, but I also think homeless shelters is another thing that we need to improve on. Um, we say that um, people on the streets, they have homes, they have somewhere to go, the homeless shelters, but that's not enough. We have to take another step in order to reach them, to let them know that we're still there. Maybe if we can, we can take them in and then maybe talk to them, or ask them why they're on the streets. We, we just see them on the streets and automatically think, oh, they probably didn't get a good education. Oh, maybe they just didn't want something. But I think maybe there's more to it. 
I'm, I'm sure you probably know this already in your research, but um, there's only, I think it's 30 women out of 107 MPs that are here, and that's, I think, actually the highest it's ever been. What do you think about that? Um, well, long time ago, um, women weren't allowed to vote. They weren't allowed to go out of the homes, they weren't allowed to have jobs. But look at them now, they're having jobs. You see them everywhere, women doctors, engineers, everywhere. So why not politics? Why not? I, I, I think they will. They'll improve. Um, yeah, the fact that not many women were, are in politics saddens me, but I think we can change that because we are the future and we need to start waking up and realize that we, we, ha we have to be the change we want to see in this world. So I guess all the women in this world are starting to stand up for their rights now. I agree with you. <laughs> 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 so do you have, if you're quite young still, do you have any sense of what you might want to be when you grow up? It's not a trick question, you don't have to answer <laughs> I wanted to be a doctor before, but now I might like think of being a politician just like Cherry, because um, I actually like arguing. I don't know if that's like... <laughs> Helpful, but yeah, I do like debate. <laughs> um, I had dreams of being a pediatrician because I just simply love children. I do, but seeing today the uh, question period, the adults are yelling, they're screaming. It's actually quite interesting. Maybe who knows? I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to be um, a veterinarian because I really adored animals, but then. I, that was that's when I was young, and now at this age, I wanted to be a lawyer. But now that I'm experience, experiencing all this, I might change my mind because of the lack of women, and I don't want to see my own gender being so like their lack of representation. How long is the program? Seven years. Seven years. Mm -hmm. What's your the highlight so far? Today? Yeah, today would be today would be one of our highlights, but um, I really did like our first. Um, I think it was the second meeting where we got where we chose our subjects, um, our topics that we wanted to talk about, and mine was youth empowerment, and I loved how we debated about it. Even though my topic didn't win, I'm glad that we could debate about it and choose a subject in the end. What was it about the topic of poverty that made it the subject in the end. Um, I think it was that we see poverty in our everyday lives, yet we fail to notice it. It's bright before our eyes, but we just don't see it. Maybe that's why we thought we could help. Um, like I said in my speech, poverty is an issue that crosses all barriers from age to gender to culture. Maybe that's why we chose it. So what, is there more? I understand that you're going to have you want to have someone from the food bank come in to do the two assemblies. Mm -hmm. Are there other elements that you want to do to sort of try to make sure other students are learning some of the things you are learning? Um, we were hoping maybe that we could do a short video, maybe a couple of pictures, maybe a little bit, maybe even interview with someone in poverty. And we we're hope we were also hoping that because in our school we 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 see kids in poverty. We can tell, right? And they're not exactly treated normally. They're teased on, yelled on, bullied by. And we hope maybe that will change as well. And we're making PowerPoints, and we hope to have some footage of, the, of our food bank and the people that go there. And with all that information, we might have a presentation in each schools. And the program, remember, is, is, it's all year, but it's really only about six sessions, including Ottawa and here, so it's once a month during the school year, so that's a lot for the girls to take on. They've done a phenomenal job. Anything else? Anything else you guys would like to say? Um, um, thank you again for having us here, and to Putila and Miss Cherry DeNovo. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys for making it. It's amazing what you can do. This is a really good experience for us. I also wanted to say that um, when you see homeless people outside, you just automatically think that they're harm, right? Because you don't know what they can do and everything. But um, I think it was yeah yesterday I was in church 
I'm waiting to get confessed, like in the confession. And this old man comes by me, and you, I autom automatically knew he was um, a homeless person. And he just stood there looking at me and said, oh, you look really nice today. And after I'm like, thank you. And then after he said that to two other girls, and he came back to me and started talking about his daughters and that he never knew that they had um, kids. And there I realized that they have no one to talk to and that they need affection from someone. So I also wanted to say that if you see a homeless person outside wanting to talk to you, don't be afraid to talk back that they're just looking for someone to talk to. Good note to end on. Thank you, and thank you, uh, press folk, for coming out. Thank you very much. And to the girls and the teachers. Thank you.